you will find out in about a couple of minutes why I am so particular about being heard. There is a story to that also. But as was said, I am a storyteller, that is my passion. And yeah, I have been telling stories on multiple media. And this has always been the case. Okay? So, when I was a child, I would see my father and mother reading books. And I would sit next to them, pull out some pieces of paper and write stories to show to them. The only problem was, I didn't know how to write. So I was basically writing gibberish. But even at that age, I was telling stories. Stories of what get me up in the morning, stories of what give me food while I'm having a cab, while I'm waiting for a cab. So everything in my life is basically, my passion has been about stories. Now the thing with stories is that, oh yeah, I should tell you all this. I get the craziest dreams also. They are almost like full-fledged movies. In fact, last night, I had this really scary dream that I was on my way here, I have almost reached, and then I realized I am wearing a dirty t-shirt. I have forgotten to wear my shirt. I am not making this up, this is true. I actually had this dream last night, I woke up in a cold sweat. Anyway, coming back to like, people say, you know, you are a storyteller, what were you doing studying engineering? And the answer to that is, I was a storyteller before engineering. I was a storyteller during engineering, and I've been a storyteller since. So, in fact, let's start with the story during my engineering days, because the thing with following a passion, is, and you've seen that with the other speakers also, there are always things are going to go wrong. Okay, there's always going to be upsets, there's going to be setbacks, things will not go according to your plan. So, how do you deal with that? The answer? Laugh, smile. It's all part of the journey. So, for example, so, I was in engineering college, we had this inter-hostel, you know, musical, play, drama kind of competition. Very prestigious and because of engineering, there would be lots of technical stuff, you know, a spaceship across stage, 20 foot worms, three level stages, all that stuff. So, I did this, in my second year, we did this musical play called Moonstone, which created history, it's become a legend. A book has been written about it and 25 years later, when you go back, college and hostel, this oh, once a I am the person, it happened. Why was a legend? Because it was the best play ever done. Because it was the worst. Murphy's law, multiply by thousand. Anything which could go wrong, went wrong. Anything which could not go wrong, went wrong. For example, the reason I was so particular about the sound. I am coming to that, but before that, one of the things in Moonstone is this fancy sci-fi thing, aliens, this, that. So, we had a spaceship, which in an auditorium like this, would come flying to stage. Rest rehearsal, perfect. Actual play came halfway and stopped. The thing is, audience does not know, they will think this is the plan. No problem, our alien will come out from behind, we have got liquid nitrogen, smoke, he will come out, talk. Somebody had gotten to get the liquid nitrogen. Okay, that's also fine. Keep it in darkness. He'll lights guy decided to give a full spotlight to him walking in from the wings. Okay, that's also fine. No problem. He's a good actor. He'll come give his speech. All will be great. He was just going to act. The person going to give the speech was me, from the wings, and I had this fancy echo microphone and all. The sound guy forgot to put it on. So I'm there talking. No sound. There's here. No dialogues. He doesn't know what's going on. Then you get the sound. And the audience is like, there is a guy standing doing things. We can't hear anything. What is that was Moonstone. That's why it's such a legend. Now, with such a big disaster, you'd think somebody would give up. Forget plays, forget writing, forget everything. The reason we didn't is because that night we sat over chai and noodles and laughed and laughed about everything which had gone wrong and there were so many stories. Somebody had a story about the dancers and one couldn't get his nada of his pajama to tie and he had to go on stage in 30 seconds. So, stuff like that. You know, the, what you learn is find the humor, treat it as a learning experience, move on and you will find a way. Last year of engineering college, doing a grand festival, we got all the money in the world, rock band, classical music, orchestra. What happened? So, 1992, December 6th, unrest, January, unrest, 
got postponed twice, came to March, thinking finally we'll have the festival. Everybody knows what happened in March 1993, more unrest. Everyone has said, cancel the festival, let's just not do it. But we went ahead, said, we'll try and make it happen, we did make it happen. Of course, because it was March by then, you couldn't get colleges from across the country. We just had local ones, mostly our own students. And one night, everything had gone well, we had the events, everything was happy, local small numbers. But my canteen guy came to me really sad and said, you know what, such a little crowd, I got so many packets of milk and they are all going waste. What did we do? We had a milk fight. So, you know how they say, when life gives you a lemon, make lemonade, when life gives you milk which is going bad, have milk fight. Working in the television and film business, you know, you have to have a sense of humor. Otherwise, you are going to become a serial killer. Not of the serials on screen, you are actually going to go kill people. I was doing this show with this channel, I am not going to name names. But suddenly we get word that the channel does not, is the script is not okay. They got a huge problem. We go for a meeting. I don't know this, you know, pulpy crime things, mad scientists making a toxin. And there was a scene where you test the toxin by putting it in a fish bowl and the fish died. Okay, fine. So we are talking to the channel person, what is the problem? I like fish. I am like, excuse me? I like fish. And I understood, she did not like the fish dying. I said, okay, you like fish. So, presumably you like animals. She like, yeah. I said, okay, can't kill an animal also. I said, do you like people? She did not understand. I said, listen, if that villain gives the toxin to his two assistants and they die, are you okay with that? She said, yeah, yeah, no problem. Great, we killed those henchmen, the episode got aired. And if you think writing leads to crazy situations, wait till you try making a film. So, there is this time we were shooting this film in Dehradun, almost done, 30 day grueling shoot, almost done with the whole film, second last day. My production guy comes and says, Achha, that jeep you were shooting with, na, the guy who owns the jeep decides, decided he does not want to give it anymore. I'm like, what do you mean you do not want to give me the jeep, I need to shoot with it. No, he jeep not get Now, we had already shot a scene after this, where the hero's friend runs out of the jeep and gets killed. I am like, but there is no jeep. We can't put the guy in the jeep. So, I made a joke. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's pretend the jeep. That's exactly what we did. We shot the cops taking the guy and the cop says, put him in the jeep. We take him off camera and we hear the sound of a car starting. So, that's the thing. You have to improvise. You have to laugh. Otherwise, life will keep throwing problems. We were working for a when OTT was just beginning, there was this platform, new platform, we were going to do their first show. It was about how startups were going out of business. It was called the last days of. To this day, I regret calling it that. You know what happened? The OTT platform itself shut down because the parent company was a startup which went broke. And I am not kidding, this is true. This really happened. After that, me and my partner would joke, let's never call something the last days. It does not work. More recently, we are working on a feature film. I mean, it's an idea which I've had for 13 years. We've been writing it for the last three and a half years. And a month ago, a web series comes out which has a bit of the same core idea. Enough to feel crushed, enough to say, I'm not doing this, I'll give up this business. But you have to adapt. So we went back to the script, changed a few things. Now it's actually become better because we've added more topicality, we added a layer which it didn't have. So, what I have learned in life is, follow your passion, but when things go wrong, when your plan does not work, when things fall apart, do not cry, do not be miserable, just adapt, flow with it. Life has a better plan, go with that plan. And how do you do that? By laughing. Laugh at what has happened, instead of crying and feeling bad for yourself and feeling miserable. And once you smile, it is a beautiful new day. So I just like to sign off by saying, go with the flow. Adapt with what life gives you, and there's always a great new tomorrow coming. Sunshine in your day.